All right, we're going to get started on uh, section 6.3, the greatest uh, integer function. The uh, objectives of this section are as follows. First, we're going to start with defining the greatest integer function, maybe a function that you're familiar with. Uh, and then we're going to prove some basic properties of this function that we will need in proving some uh, theorems concerning the uh, number three, which is finding the highest exponent of a given prime, p, in the uh, product in factorial. Then we're going to show that the binomial coefficient in take r is in fact an integer. That's a fact that we actually use. So we're going to use the uh, theorems that we develop in this section to uh, prove this. Then we're going to apply the greatest integer function to some number theoretic uh, uh, functions uh, that we actually looked at earlier. All right, so let's get started with the uh, definition of the greatest integer function. In fact, the greatest integer function is not an, a number theoretic function. It's a function whose domain is a uh, set of all real numbers, but it is very useful in the study of uh, actually in number theory, and we already have used it in fact informally. So now we want to look at it formally and prove some uh, of its uh, properties. So here's the definition. Let uh, x be a real number. We denote by bracket x the uh, largest, or let me say the actual the greatest, so let it correct the uh, name, the uh, greatest integer less than or equal or equal in fact, it's going to be equal to x itself if x happens to be an integer. If not, then the bracket x, and that's another name for it, actually, uh, it's going to be less than, strictly less than x. All right. Uh, another way to actually look at this, uh, that is... The uh, bracket x is the unique integer that satisfies the double inequality. x minus 1 less than bracket x less than or equal to x. So it is only one integer in this interval from x minus 1 to x, where x is actually any real number. So an interval of length actually 1. All right. Now uh, let's look at uh, some examples. So if we look at the, uh, again, this function is defined for any real number. In particular, we could take a, a rational number, the three halves, the bracket of that is the largest integer less than uh, actually three halves. It's uh, what it is, and there's only one integer less than three halves, which is an integer, when that is going to be equal to one. All right. Yeah, if we look at the, the square root, for example, of two, which is one point something, and this is equal to one. Then we look at uh, one half, for example, this is equal to zero. Let's look at some negative values here. 
So if we look at uh, negative three halves, we're going to see this is actually equal negative two. All right? Because the largest integer that is less than or equal negative three halves is negative two. Let's kind of go the other way. And if we take a negative pi, this is going to be negative four and so on. All right? So in other words, we uh, actually the greatest integer uh, this time we're equal to n. This bracket we could it is actually a function. So let me write this down. And uh, so the greatest. integer function is a, a function denoted by this bracket x. We're going to put the last in here. Uh, it's kind of uh, put the value of this function. So we go from the real numbers into actually the values of this function are integers, all right? Uh, given by, of course, the value of f is just there, which is the greatest equal the greatest. Uh, integer of x, the way we define. So it is the greatest integer of x, which is the uh, greatest integer less than or equal to x. Let me actually write that down. So this is the greatest integer less than or equal to x. Now we're going to note that, uh, note that uh, this function is not a number terrific function. Just it's actually a real, real valued function, okay? Yeah, so its domain is all real numbers. All right, we're going to give a big list of basic properties of this function. Uh, some of it is, is you know, very clear. Uh, some others need proofs. And uh, most of the properties that we're listed here will be useful for us in this section and other sections as well. So we want to put all of them in one place here. All right. Uh, most, a lot of these properties are actually in the, in the book left for exercises. However, I'm going to go ahead and prove uh, these properties. This is here. And this left list properties of greatest uh, integer part. The first property is that very hard to see that bracket x is equal x itself if and only if x is an integer. All right. Second property. It's going to be this. Uh, first of all, I, I should have actually stated this, that the x and the y in here, all right, x, y, and theta, we're going to have them as uh, real numbers, all right, and then there are other types of numbers that the integers, I will indicate uh, that uh, when we actually list the properties. 
All right, the uh, second uh, property is x less than or equal to x, and this is less than bracket x plus 1. Also in here we have uh, another property along with this, uh, and this is 0 less than x minus bracket x less than uh, 1. Property 3, x can be written as uh, bracket x, which is going to be an integer, plus some number theta, real number theta, where theta would be 0, but less than 1. So we call this one is, you can even express x as the uh, x, you know, which is the integer plus the fractional part. So we call theta the fractional part of theta is called the fractional part of x. It might be a misleading means this is not, theta is not actually a uh, you know, a rational number, all right? It, this is a, it could be a real number, all right? So that's why it could be misleading the word fractional. All right, number uh, four, an important property that we'll be using in this section is if we take a real number x and add an integer to it, then we can write this one, the Greatest integer of x, bracket x plus m. I can take the m sort of out, where for any integer m. Well, number five, we have uh, bracket x plus bracket y is less than or equal x plus y. And this is less than or equal x plus y plus 1. All right, a few more properties. Again, it's a very big list, but a lot of these are very simple. Number six, if x is less than or equal to y, then the bracket x is less than or equal to bracket y. And number seven, let's see what's number seven. Going to have this one is the bracket of bracket x over m m is an integer, is the same as x m, again, for every m, because they're not equal to zero in z. Number eight, if m n are positive integer, then n over m, this is the number of integers among uh, 1, 2, 3, up to n that are divisible by that are divisible by m. That are divisible by m. And uh, the last one is number nine. If a and b are integers and b positive, 
And uh, we know that I can express A by using division algorithm as A equals T Q plus R, where zero less than or equal R less than T. So if this is uh, the relationship between A and B, then the Q is in fact A over B. Okay, the bracket A over B. All right, we are gonna go ahead and start proving this. All right, starting from the first one. We want to show that uh, so bracket x equals x if and only if x is an integer. So let's assume that x is an integer. See, by definition, of that as this largest integer less than or equal to x, this implies and it is actually this is equal to x. There's nothing to this basically is equal to x. Or another way to see this is the unique integer the unique integer that satisfies this is actually x itself. Alright, because x is an integer so this must be that. So that's that. Now conversely Uh, let's assume that uh, bracket x is actually is equal to x. Again, this implies that uh, x must be an entity. That's why the nature of defining the bracket is the okay the uh, greatest integer. But then less than or equal to x is what it is. There is nothing uh, to that. Now let's go and prove the uh, second property that is uh, this double inequality. All right, so number two. I'm going to show. Yeah, the bracket x is less than x less than x plus one. Okay, so we we know that uh, we have uh, this right. So if I add one to this. We obtain the following x minus one plus one less than actually x plus one less than or equal x plus one. So we already have part of the inequality, which is this. So we have this part, inequality. We also have from here that the bracket x is less than or equal to x. So if I put these together, then we have bracket x, less than or equal x, and together with this, 
we have this then x uh, plus one. The other part of uh, the uh, to show zero this term or equal x minus bracket x and this then one. So all what we have to do is to take this inequality, this double inequality, and let's subtract actually the bracket x from all sides and the middle. And then we get zero, this then or equal x minus bracket x less than one. All right, so this equality that is which actually we call it the fractional part, and this is what we need to show number three, is all we have to do is to name this as theta. So for three, this theta equal x minus a bracket x. This implies that uh, that x theta plus bracket x is equal to x and theta is between zero and one. All right. So in other words, we should write this is bracket x plus theta and again theta satisfies. Oh, so there is nothing uh, to this. Now let's look at the uh, number four. Now I have some more property that needs little work. So number four. What we want is to show that x plus m is equal x plus m for every m in v. All right. And uh, to do this, let's look at uh, this, x plus m minus one. All right, this is actually by definition of the bracket. This one is less than x plus m. This then or equal to the x plus m. Like this. All right. Uh, also, we have uh, x minus 1. This then x bracket x. And this is less than or equal just that. So we're going to add to this, add m. All right? So this becomes x plus m minus 1. This is x plus m outside. And this one is x plus m. Now let's consider these two inequalities this and this. So uh, in here we have two integers actually squeezed in between x plus m minus 1 and x plus m, all right, which is the bracket of x plus m, and this one is the bracket of x plus m, but it is squeezed in between the same two real numbers, all right. Now by the uniqueness of by the uniqueness of the integer between uh, x plus m minus 1 and x plus m, this one is inclusive. It could be less than or equal. All right. This implies that these two integers must actually equal to each other. 
All right. So this means that x plus m x is an integer, and this must equal split in between these, and this is an integer, and they must equal to each other. All right. Let's uh, move on to the uh, next property. And that one is uh, the inequality, okay? So double inequality, uh, we have Uh, this is number, which number is, this is number five, all right, and number five, I wanted to show x, uh, yeah, the x individually plus y, this then or equal x plus y, by the bracket, this then or equal x plus y plus y. All right, let's just start with the first part. We're going to show this first. Now we know that uh, we can write x as bracket x plus theta 1 and y. Similarly, we can write bracket y plus theta 2 where uh, 0 is or equal theta 1, theta 2 is between 0 and 1. All right, now uh, let's go ahead and add, all right, or take uh, x plus y like this. So this is equal to bracket x plus theta 1, plus the bracket y, plus theta 2. And we can write this as bracket x, plus bracket y, plus theta 1, plus theta 2. Now remember bracket x plus bracket y, this is an integer, so this is in z, by the previous property, number four, I can take it outside. So this is equal to, and then we have theta one plus theta two remains in the bracket, plus this x plus one. Now we also know that since zero is the or equal theta one, theta two, less than one, this implies when we add them up, theta 1 plus theta 2 is going to be bigger than or equal to 0, it's going to be less than 2. So each one of them, it could get as, as close to 1 as possible. So when we add, we're going to come up with a number at most, at most, uh, you know, it's going to be less than actually. With this, then this implies that uh, the bracket theta 1 plus theta 2 is going to be bigger than or equal to 0. So with this, then we can uh, say that this inequality in here, bigger than or equal, if I uh, remove the uh, theta 1 plus theta 2 bracket, you get x plus just 1. It could be bigger or it could be equal to zero. So with this, then we have uh, the uh, x plus y in a bracket. So this one is bigger than or equal to the x plus the y. All right, now let's go ahead and prove the other part of the inequality, which is this. Okay. And uh, to do this, we're going to look at, uh, again, let me actually write down what we have in here. Just I 
want to take this one out and move all of this. And I want to write this next to it. So we have here theta 1 plus theta 2 plus x plus y. Well, let me move this to this side. So we have uh, x plus y minus theta 1 plus theta 2. This is equal x plus y. Now, since we have uh, theta 1 plus theta 2, remember this one is less than 2, and this is bigger than or equal to 0, so definitely we have uh, 0 less than or equal theta 1 plus theta 2, and this could be less than or equal to 1, all right? Or actually, uh, one less than theta one plus theta two less than. So in either case, then we have theta one plus theta two is going to be less than or equal to one. Because if it is within one in here, less than actually or equal to one, it's going to be one. But if it is between this step to still it's going to be equal to at most one. All right, and from this we can conclude that by multiply by a negative theta one plus theta two. This is bigger than or equal negative one. All right, uh, let's put this uh, together with uh, what we have in here. All right. So let me write it down here. So we have minus bracket theta 1 plus theta 2 actually bigger than or equal to negative 1. Let me actually put this, uh, add the uh, x plus y to both sides in here. So we're going to add an x plus y. And x plus y like this. Right, and I'm going to uh, replace, all right, uh, that this is going to be equal also x plus y. That's from here. Yeah, this one is equal to x plus y. So all together, then we get the x plus y. By itself, I'm going to take this to the other side. So this becomes this then x plus y plus y. And this is actually this part of the inequality. All right, let's uh, move on to the uh, number seven, I believe. We're going to do number six. Number six. And number six actually just follows from this immediately. Six. Uh, so in here to show if uh, x is not or equal to y, then bracket x is not or equal. To well, uh, x this time or equal to y implies that y is equal x plus alpha for some alpha and i. All right, so uh, now let's look at uh, Bracket of y equal bracket x plus alpha. 
And they just showed that this bracket to, to think this is bigger than or equal to, all right, x plus alpha. All right, and this again says that uh, since the y is bigger than, or actually, yeah, so this means that the y is bigger than or equal to x plus alpha. And the actually the alpha which we are adding here is supposed to be a positive, all right, a positive integer. Uh, a positive, sorry, real number, and which makes this is actually bigger than or equal to, uh, or it could be zero, non negative uh, real number. So this is x, all right? So because we have a, a quantity that is positive uh, or zero is added to the x, so that's x. That's all right, uh, number seven is the uh, is this one so I want to show this bracket x over a non zero integer m is the same as the bracket x over m so every n does not equal to zero. All right, again, we're going to use uh, the x in here is, let me see, yeah. So we're going to have the x is equal bracket x plus theta, where Data. Let me see if I want to. Yeah. Equal to zero less than one. Now we're going to apply the uh, division. Apply the uh, division algorithm to uh, bracket x and m. Both of these are integers, all right? And we can write the x, bracket x as qm plus r, where the remainder r bigger than or equal to zero, less than or equal to m minus one. So this is less than m, we could just write it like that. All right, let's look at the uh, left-hand side. which is the bracket x over m. And this is, we're going to replace the bracket x by q m plus r over m. And this is equal bracket q plus r over m. Now, since q is, of course, here the q and the r, remember that, Q are our integers, okay, unique integers that is given by the division algorithm. So now we have an integer plus a fractional part in here, and we could write this one as Q plus R over M. I claim that R over M is going to be actually equal to zero. And to see this, so this is what we're going to actually uh, do. All right, so let's look at uh, the uh, R over, over F. So we have uh, zero is less than or equal R, less than or equal M minus one. And also I have the uh, Let me see which one I want in here. Uh, I want the M, all right. Uh, R, and also 
now we have the bracket X. Bracket X. Uh, let me see. Let me look. Uh, there is one other thing in here. We wanted uh, plus theta in here. Uh, I'm sorry. So we have the bracket X is equal to this plus theta. Okay. Let me let me take all this off. Yeah. So bracket X equal Q M plus R. Okay. And Which one I am looking at in here? Uh, no, actually we we are we are fine. Let let, let let me keep everything as is. I'm sorry. Uh, this one is just the Q plus R over that. The other one I need the the theta for it. All right. Uh, I claim that uh, this one is actually less than M. All right. So if I divide by M, and this implies that the bracket of R by M is in fact equal to zero. So this is equal to zero, and this is equal to zero. So this is one thing. I want to look at, so this is actually the right-hand side. I'm sorry. So this is the right-hand side. Let me look at the left-hand side, all right? So we're going to do the left hand side. I'm going to show if actually also is equal to Q. All right, left hand side. Left hand side is actually what I have done is the left hand side. I, I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> All right, the right hand side, right hand side. What I have before is a, is, is a true actually, the right hand uh, side. All right, which is x over m. I'm sorry. Uh, so this one is going to be bracket x plus theta over uh, m. All right. Now the uh, bracket x is a q m plus r plus theta over m. And again, this is equal to q. M cancel out and R plus theta over that. And this is, I can take the Q out and then R plus theta over that. All right, now this is where I want to show that also that uh, bracket is equal to zero. And to do that, so we have the R is, uh, we have R equal to zero, less than R equal to M minus one and theta. Is bigger than or equal to zero less than one. So when I add these two inequalities together, I come up with less than, strictly less than, because the theta is strictly less than one. And this adds up to that. So which makes the r plus theta over m less than one. If I divide by m, and the bracket becomes equal to zero. So the bracket becomes equal to zero, and we have uh, the both in the left hand side. This one is equal to Q, and this one is also equal to Q. All right, and then they are equal to each other. All right, let's look at uh, the last property. Which is that in, in some sense, actually, it is contained in uh, this discussion in here. So, if we are given that uh, number eight, I don't know, eight, or uh, I lost track with which one we have. The last one in here is. Uh, No. Right. So we have A equal CQ plus R, you know, this number equal R, this number equal uh, D minus 1. All right, 
so this implies that a over b equal to q plus r over b and in the bracket Yeah, we can take the Q out plus R over B. And since from here, we have R over B. Actually, I just let's put this T here. Uh, it's less than one. So this means this is equal to zero and this is just a Q. All right. Uh, now we're gonna go ahead and uh, there's one other property, sorry, there's one other property that uh, is very, very important. I did not list, all right? Yeah, let me actually, no, no, I did actually, I did. I just uh, skipped the proof. And that is if M and N are integers, Well, I lost count which one I'm proving in here. So let me write what I wanted to show. So we wanted to show if M and N are positive integers, then N over M is the uh, number of integers among one, two, up to n that are divisible So to prove this, first of all, if M is bigger than N, right, then there is no integer among these. is divisible by f, which implies that there are zero and n over m is also equal to zero with if uh, m is bigger than f, because in this case, it is equivalent to saying that n over m is going to be less than one. And also, this is bigger than zero. Uh, so that's what it is. All right, so let's assume that uh, M is bigger than or less than or equal, sorry. M is less than or equal to N. All right, now if These integers m, 2m, 3m, up to jm are all the positive integers or the positive integers. less than or equal to n and are divisible that are divisible uh, 
Start the multiples of m basically divisible by m. Then what we have to show, then we need to show the g is in fact equal m divided bracket m over m. Right? So we start with m and the next integer that is going to be divisible by m is 2m, 3m, up to jm. And let's assume these are all of them less than or equal as far we have not exceeded m. All right? So these are the, uh, you know, the integers that are divisible by m, okay, and less than or equal to m. So if these are is the case, if I can show j is equal to the bracket of m uh, by n, then we are done. Now, uh, this, what does this mean? This we have the uh, jm. So we have, and this is, I say, this is the, did I say the largest? Okay, so these are, are all the integers are less than or equal to it. So we have j so we have j m this is less than or equal to n and then we have this one is actually bigger than j plus 1 uh, no no So we have the uh, JM. I know this one is less than or equal to N. All right. And if I go with J plus 1, M, this is going to exceed N. All right. So by definition, all right, these are all the integers are the cellular equal and divisible by m. So the next one is not going to be. Then we have this implies that uh, n is bigger than or equal jm, and this is bigger than j plus 1 times. So let's divide by m, divide by m, and this would imply this is less than or equal to n over m, this then j plus 1. Now remember j is an integer which means by the first property by property one or actually property two probably property two uh, of the theorem we have the uh, bracket n over m is equal to j. Alright. All right. So this is uh, all the uh, properties of the greatest integer function. I think I'm going to stop right here, and uh, this took much more time than I thought it would. Uh, so next time I will uh, actually go over the uh, theorem that are in uh, this section. All right, so I'll stop right here.